Welcome to BTEC, this is David. This video is sponsored by Direct Mobiles. You can check them out at directmobiles.co.uk. The Galaxy S20 series is finally here. Unpacked has wrapped up and I've just got back from the London Unpacked event where I got hands on with the whole S20 series as well as the Galaxy Z Flip. And now we can finally bring you the real details, not just the leaks and rumors, but everything there is to know about the new Samsung flagships. These handsets have been so heavily leaked and pretty much all of the rumors were correct. This year's series of handsets is most definitely about the camera. Let's start with the regular S20, although there isn't really anything regular about it. It's a flagship phone in its own right, and the thing about all three of these devices is that they share the same screen technology. With QHD Plus resolution and a 120 hertz refresh rate, the screens don't only look better than ever before, but now the fluid animations enhance the user experience. It's a 6.3 inch display on the S20, the in-display fingerprint scanner makes a return across all the devices, but this time it's much more reliable and has a larger surface area to read your fingerprint. There's also improved wireless charging speeds across all three devices and an improved wireless power share. S20 comes with either 8 or 12 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of onboard storage, upgradable by another terabyte through microSD expansion, just as the S20 Plus and the Ultra. There's a triple camera system for the S20 with a 12 megapixel ultra wide, a 12 megapixel normal and a 64 megapixel telephoto lens with a three times optical zoom. This is boosted up to 30 times through pixel cropping of the high megapixel sensor. The S20 Plus gives us a 6.7 inch display, again using the same 120 hertz tech. The screens are almost totally bezel-less, in fact they are bezel-less. All three screens are very striking when you look at them. The S20 Plus comes in with a 4,500 milliamp hour battery and 12 gigs of RAM. This one definitely does sit bang in the middle of the range for its size and its specs. The camera though has one more lens than the regular S20. It has pretty much the same setup. It's got the same 12 megapixel ultra wide and 12 megapixel normal lens, as well as the same 64 megapixel zoom system with the three times optical zoom and the 30 times super resolution zoom but the S20 Plus has the addition of Samsung's new depth vision camera. A time of flight sensor there to give the S20 Plus a sense of depth. This is very useful for when taking portrait shots, but it can also be used for subject tracking and it's a great addition to the S20 camera system. But it's the S20 Ultra that most people would be interested in and for very good reason. This is the first Samsung device to feature a 108 megapixel sensor. But before we get to the camera system, the rest of the phone is also extremely impressive. We've got a 6.9 inch dynamic AMOLED Infinity O display. The pinhole cameras on these screens are smaller than ever before. And while it's a 10 megapixel unit on both the S20 and the S20 Plus, the Galaxy S20 Ultra has a 40 megapixel selfie camera, which does combine pixels together to give you a 10 megapixel shot. This huge bezel -less screen really is an impressive sight. There's a 5,000 milliamp hour battery inside this device, available with either 12 gigs or 16 gigs of RAM, and either 128 gigs or 512 gig storage options. And just like the other two handsets, it's possible to carry around up to 1.5 terabytes worth of data with this device. But the S20 Ultra is all about its camera. This new camera system is a huge upgrade from Samsung's previous camera that they had in both the S10 and the Note 10 series. Last year's triple camera system had two 12 megapixel sensors and a 16 megapixel sensor for ultra wide shots. The S20 Ultra uses a 12 megapixel sensor for its ultra wide angle camera, but the main wide angle camera is now a crazy 108 megapixel unit. Now this sensor is capable of delivering a 12 megapixel shot by combining nine pixels down into one. It has a pixel pitch of 0.8 microns, but shooting at 12 megapixels, it has the equivalent of 2.4 microns, which is huge as far as pixels are concerned. Throughout 2019, even the most advanced smartphone cameras had a pixel pitch of around about 1.4 microns. Larger pixels means more light received, which translates to better low light performance. 1.4 micron sensors are actually pretty good in dark conditions. Of course, we get the specialist depth vision camera with the S20 Ultra, as well as a periscope style lens. Now this lens reflects the light across the device to create some separation between the lens and the sensor for a higher magnification. The Galaxy S20 Ultra has a lossless hybrid optical zoom of 10 times, and the same way that the S20 and the S20 Plus use their 64 megapixel sensor for pixel cropping combined with the telephoto lens, the Ultra takes this to another level and offers a 100 times super resolution zoom. And last but certainly not least, we've got the Galaxy Z Flip. 
If you've seen leaked videos featuring this handset, then you're probably quite intrigued by this folding flip design. But I have to say, when I first saw the leaks, it did kind of look like a budget device to me. But now that I've seen it in the flesh and with a price tag of $1,300, it absolutely isn't. There's something about the Z Flip. Unfolded, it seems like it's actually more than twice the size of it is when it's closed. Open it up and you get plenty of screen real estate. It's an extremely tall device with a 20 by nine aspect ratio, but when you close it, it definitely seems like it's more than half the size and it is very small when it's closed. Samsung have covered the pliable display this time with actual glass, so thin that it's able to fold and close flat. They really seem to have learned a lot from last year's Galaxy Fold. The hinge seems just as complicated as it was before, but this time they fitted it with special nylon fibers which are there specifically to keep the dust out. There's a cam system in there as well to ensure smooth operation while opening and closing. The Z Flip's hinge is also designed to be like a laptop, so it can stay open at different angles. And when it's in this mode, it will split the screen. So for example, if you're watching YouTube, on the top half, you'll get your content, whilst on the bottom half, you'll see the comments. Shout out to anyone watching this on a Z Flip. The cam has two 12 megapixel sensors on the back. There's also a very small screen for use when the device is closed. It will display the time as well as your notifications, but all the while I thought that this was a monochrome screen, but it's not. If you close the Galaxy Z Flip and then double tap on the power button, which incidentally also is a side mounted fingerprint scanner, it will open the camera app and allow you to use that tiny screen to take a selfie. It's a pretty neat trick. I mean, this phone is full of pretty neat tricks. In fact, for me, Samsung have given us quite a tough choice. If you're in the market for a new phone, you probably really like the look of the Flip. As I do, I think it's a really cool device. However, you're not going to get that incredible camera tech that you get on the S20s. It's a tough one. I mean, do you want the best smartphone camera that there's ever been, or do you want a folding screen? Well, I kind of want both. I have a feeling that the Z Flip is gonna do very well for Samsung, so hopefully they will continue this line. When you get hold of one of these phones, you realize that a lot of clever engineering has gone into producing it. The Z Flip runs a Snapdragon 855, and I do wonder how that compares to the Exynos 990, which is supposed to be inside the Galaxy S20. However, there was no mention whatsoever about the Exynos chip. In fact, the only thing I can remember them saying was that it had a new and powerful chip. That's it. There was no more details than that. It seems like Samsung are trying to distance themselves from the name Exynos. Could this be a sign that this is the last series of handsets that runs the Exynos chip? Could we be getting a Snapdragon next year? I really hope so. Anyway, you cannot help but be impressed by these handsets. Full reviews of all of these phones are on the way, so make sure that you're subbed to BTEC so you don't miss out. And when you're ready to pick up your S20 series phone, make sure you check out the Direct Mobile's website. It's a place where you can compare all of the available deals for the S20 series and the Z Flip with all of the networks right there on the one website. Plus they have over 24 years of award-winning customer service, so you really are in good hands. Direct Mobile's is there to find you the best possible price. Check down in the video description below for the link or search directmobiles.co.uk. And don't forget to check out the BTEC Amazon shop where you'll find all the best tech and accessories, including for the Galaxy S20 series. The BTEC Amazon shop is definitely worth checking out. And that's it from me. Thanks for watching. There's lots more from the Galaxy S20 series on the way, so make sure that you're subbed to BTEC so you don't miss out. And if you enjoyed this video, leave me a like, leave me a comment, and don't forget to subscribe for more BTEC. You can follow me on social media. I'm David, this is BTEC.